Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Today, we're going to talk about the system of professional development of teachers of English. Saying the word teachers, we mean not only those who work at schools, but also those in pre-primary education, uh, colleges, universities, those who work at language courses, some private tutors. I can assure you that our system is versatile and I'll do my best to fit the content to your context. Okay? Good. Uh, I know that today's topic may bring up a number of questions from you. Uh, that is why, please, type your questions in a proper area. You can find it on your dashboard and send to me. At the end of the session, we will have a question and answer time, and I'll do my best to address as many questions from you as, we, as I can in the time we have. Um, so, let's get down to the topic. The first question is, so why me and why this topic? Uh, you know, my motto is um, never stop learning because life never stops teaching. From my earliest beginning as a student of the teacher training college, to my role today as an academic director of the training center, I've been looking for the ways of growing professionally to be the teacher my learners deserve. And I've been looking for some tips, tools and techniques to help my learners become uh, independent users of English. But I was never sure whether my professional development was comprehensive. And I was also uh, always wondering whether there were other areas I wasn't aware of. The system I'm going to share with you today gives the answer to the eternal question. How to know where to grow? So, let's get down to the system itself. Um, to create something new, first we have analyzed what exists in Ukraine and in the world for professional development. And I'll share with you our findings. So, since 2017 in Ukraine, we have Ramka Besperevnego Profesijnego Rozwitku Wczytelit Inozemnego created by British Council and Ministry of Education and Science of Ukraine. And in Europe and in the world, they use Cambridge English teaching framework. We were absolutely amazed with the high level of their compliance of these two frameworks. Similar categories, stages of development, descriptors. And having seen no difference and receiving the support from the Cambridge University Press and Cambridge Assessment, we based our system on, of professional development on Cambridge English teaching framework. Uh, let's have a look at it in details. So, this framework comprises five categories of professional development. They are learning and the learner, teaching, learning and assessment, professional development and values, language ability, and language knowledge and awareness for teaching. Category number one, and it is no coincidence that pride of place goes to learning and the learner. This category looks at your understanding of key language learning theories and concepts your awareness of different types of learners and teaching context and learning preferences, as well as your ability to apply this understanding to plan and facilitate language learning. So, category number one, of course, it is about our learners. 
Because first and foremost, we should always think of those who are in front of us, their age, their preferences, uh, the styles, interests, everything and anything. And only bearing in mind these ideas, our teaching and their learning will be successful. So category number one, learning and the learner. Let's move on to the next category. Teaching, learning and assessment. Developing in this category will improve your ability to plan and manage language learning, make effective use of learning resources, understand teaching language system and skills and assess learning. So this category is the largest because the following areas of knowledge and competence are each important in their own right and grouped together under the six subcategories. These are lesson and course planning, using teaching aids and resources, classroom management, teaching language systems, their grammar, vocabulary, phonology and discourse, Another subcategory that is teaching language skills, listening, reading, speaking and writing and assessing language learning. Here we're talking about assessment concepts and principles. So the second category, teaching, learning and assessment. Category number three, professional development and values. This category covers your understanding and practice in the areas of teacher learning, classroom observation, planning own professional development, teamwork and collaboration, and critical reflection on teaching and learning. So that is about us, about our professional development, new achievements and the way to grow. Category number three, professional development and values. The fourth category, language ability. This category evaluates your understanding of language points taught at different levels of the common European framework of reference for languages, CEFR. Uh, developing in this area will improve your ability to use language accurately and appropriately in your daily work when interacting with learners or other teachers. Uh, this category is about classroom language, language models, recognizing learner errors and communicating with other professionals. I mean, using meta language. So category number four is, uh, is about our ability to speak, use, understand the English language. And category number five, language knowledge and awareness for teaching. This category looks at your understanding of key terms and concepts used to describe language. Your use of strategies to check and develop your language awareness your awareness of a range of relevant print and digital resources for researching language forms, meanings, use and pronunciation. And also about your ability to apply such knowledge practically in order to facilitate language learning. So, category number five. For me, it is very close to what we learned in pedagogical universities and the faculties of uh, English language teaching. Yeah. Let's sum up. Five categories, five directions of professional development. Again, they are learning and the learner, teaching, learning and assessment, professional development and values, language ability, and language knowledge and awareness for teaching. It is widely accepted that learning to teach is an ongoing process. 
And during our careers, we progress through the stages or levels of teacher development. That is why each category has four stages of teacher competency. They are foundation, developing, proficient, and expert. That is how it looks, the whole framework. In a column, these are categories, and horizontal, these are stages. And in these areas, we see the descriptors. The detailed descriptions here show that gradual development of teachers' expertise over time involves growing understanding of teaching and learning, growing awareness of own strengths, weaknesses and potential as a teacher, as well as the ability to respond to a more complex range of classroom situations. Let's look at one of the descriptors. So, developing the habit of self-assessing own development related to one's career goals and using this to select appropriate activities and participating in them in an appropriate way in order to achieve own goals. Which category do you think this descriptor belongs to? Let's have a poll. On your screen, you see the names of the categories. Look through the descriptor and choose the category it belongs to. Choose number one if this descriptor is about learning and the learner. Two, if it is for teaching, learning and assessment. Three, if you think that it is about professional development and values. Four, if it is about language ability. And five, if you think it is about language knowledge and awareness. Choose the proper option and click on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Exactly. Uh, as the majority of you gave the right answer, the category of professional development and values. That is. And now let's decide which stage the next descriptor fits to. Have a look at it. Requires guidance in self-assessing own needs and may participate in professional development opportunities if and when encouraged. So which stage? Do you think this descriptor fits to? A. Let's have another poll. So choose A if you think it is for foundation stage, B for developing, C for proficiency, and D if you think this descriptor about the stage of expert. Click the option you think it is appropriate here. Okay, good. Thank you. Exactly. 
So that is about the stage of foundation. Um, let's have a look at the descriptors for the next three stages now. They show how competency grows. Mm, which stage do you feel you are at? A, B, C, or D? Read the descriptors to this category, identify your stage, and let me know. Click A for foundation, B for developing, C for proficiency, or D for the expert. Okay, good. I see. Okay, so I have listeners now from all four categories. Thank you for your replies. In order to do this task, to identify your stage, you had to self-assess your skills and awareness. And that is very important for continuing professional development to evaluate critically your gains and gaps so as to target your efforts for completing the gaps you have now. System descriptors are one way of finding out what teachers are assumed to know and be able to do. And another tool we created for you, that is for self-diagnostic and that is Linguist Professional Development Self-Evaluation Form. Another one is the tool Linguist Professional Development Self-Evaluation Form. We created the test for you to do it and to make a self-diagnostic. What you know, which knowledge and skills do you have and to identify some gaps. This tracker is a component of the system of professional development. By using the system, you can identify where you are in your development, plan where you would like to be and identify what you can do to get there. We recognize that professional development is our personal responsibility. As a proverb says to go, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. That is why we see our mission in providing opportunities to you in selecting the proper product that will lead you to the set goal. And that is what we prepared based on the Cambridge framework. So, our products. In the first line, you can see face-to-face -face courses. The first one, teaching young learners and teens teaching adults and teaching kids. The next two courses in the second line, these are online or blended courses from Cambridge University Press, that is language for teaching and a certificate in uh, EMI, English as a media of instruction. And the last one, that is our summer schools. Let me start on them in details. So, teaching young learners and teens. It is a four-level course which covers all methodological issues from the first three categories. Each next level is a logical continuation of the previous one. At each stage, we offer a 24-hour course. This summer, we set off the level foundation in seven cities. 
Киев, Одесса, Харьков, Хмельницкий, Чернигов, Луцк и Тернопель. In autumn, other cities may join this project. Uh, you can take the whole course or uh, any of the three modules of it. So, as you can see, the course foundation, that is the basic, the basic knowledge every teacher should have and be able to do in order to feel confident in the classroom. And as far as you can see, it covers the first three categories. We're talking about learners, how to teach skills and language systems, how to assess knowledge, and of course it is CPD. And for the CPD in this course, it is lesson observation and analysis, to be able to observe lessons of your more experienced colleagues and to take the best from this. If your learners are a bit older than teens, there is a course teaching adults for them. It is also a 24 hour course, four levels, just very similar in the structure and context to the uh, teaching young learners, but focuses on this age group. But if your learners are kids from four to seven years old, we have a 24 hour course for you. If you work uh, with the pre-primary learners and also the first class, this course teaching kids is made up according to the concept of the new Ukrainian school, which is approved by the Ministry of Education and Science of Ukraine. And it is a very practical course with plenty of tried and tested activities. So that is, for teaching kids. All these three courses are face-to-face -face, and all of them cover the first three categories of the framework. What to do with the last two about language? For them, we have a course, Language for Teachers. It is Cambridge University Press courses of the three levels, A2, B1 and B2. And they are designed for English language teachers working in primary and secondary education. So it's up to you to choose um, which direction, so the age of your learners. And after doing some uh, self-evaluating test, you will know the level necessary for you to cover this course. Uh, this course built English language skills and give teachers the language they need to teach English with confidence. As you see, this course consists of uh, three modules. Language for the classroom, language for teacher-learner communication, and language for the professional. And each module comprises of two parts. General English, with the focus on language use across a wide range of topics, friends, hobbies, habits, celebrations, and English for the teacher with focus on professional language teachers use inside and outside the classroom. It is giving instructions, explaining concepts, correcting errors, praising, encouraging, and disciplining, that is language for face-to-face -face and online communication. Completing both parts of the course, you will not only improve the range and accuracy of the English you use to manage your lessons, but will also be more confident about your own language use in the classroom and while communicating with other teachers in English. This course is a 120 hour online plus 35 hour teacher led. And you can do this course uh, during 10 months. So up to you to choose the pace, uh, the mode, if you're interested in improving your language level. So this course is for you. And the certificate for this course you will receive from Cambridge University. Another course is certificate in EMI, English as a media of instruction. This Cambridge course is for lecturers at universities, colleges, 
and institutes of higher education. That is a 40-hour online plus 24-hour tutor-led course, and it comprises eight modules. You can see them on the screen. Lectures, seminars, practical sessions, tutorial supervision, these sorts of things. The modules provide useful language in all subject areas. Authentic examples of language use, including Cambridge University video footage, a range of interactive activities to explore and practice key language, opportunities for reflection and applying new language and skills into your own context, progress tests and assignments. And again, you will receive the certificate from Cambridge University Press not only at the end of the course, but also after each module. So, uh, this course is for teachers of English who teach in colleges and universities, as well as for your colleagues of different subjects who deliver their sessions in English. Because in every module, you will find out not only tips how to make your lectures or seminars effective, but also useful phrases. What exactly to say correctly in English and how to do it properly? That is certificate in EMI. For our summer schools, we designed a course learning to teach. It is a 24 hour course where you will have an opportunity to refresh or gain your knowledge and skills in all five categories. Every day, you will master your skills in how to teach language in context, update your knowledge of language and methodology, and also pick up some reflective practices. You can see in the table, so language itself and how to teach in context, methodology, and reflection because we learn not when we learn or teach we learn when we reflect on our actions actually summer schools are a balanced mixture of study and relax and that's your chance to feel how enjoyable learning can be this year we organize them in two cities it is Ushgarad and kamenitz podilsky Join us and have a fruitful summer. If you are interested in these courses, please just let me know the name of the course in the comments. We were talking about teaching young learners Teaching adults, teaching kids, language for teaching, EMI, and summer school. Which course do you find appealing to you? Mm -hmm. Teaching kids in summer school. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alina. EMI, thank you, Alena. Adults, thank you, Lilia. The first and the second. Thank you, Alena. Mm -hmm. So we're still collecting your ideas. And again, have a look at the courses. Young learners and teens, adults, kids, language for teaching, AMI and summer schools. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So as far as I can see, just all of the six courses rather interesting for you. Thank you for your answers. And ta-da! Breaking news. 
only three days and only for you, our sales. Discounts up to 20% for our courses teaching young learners, EMI and language for teaching. Have a look at the dates and please grab your discount. As we promised and announced, I'll share with you several activities from our courses. Ready for that? Grab your pencils and make notes. Activities. So, activity number one, that is star bursting. It is an excellent activity to help your learners practice question making skills. Choose any topic they are interested in. And that is to write in the middle of the star. Together with learners, brainstorm possible questions for each star end. For example, today we are talking with you about CPD. Which question might you ask with the word, for example, with the question word, what? What are you planning to do in the nearest future for your CPD? Yeah? What courses are interesting for you? I asked you several minutes ago, and thank you very much, you are still answering this question. While learners are brainstorming, write down at least one question on the board near the question words, just demonstrating what exactly you are expecting from your children. And after them, ask your learners to create more questions. They can work in pairs. While students are working, teachers monitoring yeah, to help them with word order in questions, uh, maybe some tenses, yeah, so that to avoid the situation did and played, this sort of things. And for this stage, um, you can have an auction. For example, interns, learners say their questions and the last question at each end wins. So, that is this activity a kind of simulator for making questions. It is star bursting. And that is for controlled practice. The next activity Talk when the music stops can be a natural continuation of the previous one when learners ask and answer their questions. So, at the previous activity, Star Bursting, your learners made up lots of questions. What to do with them? Just to throw away? No, it's not our solution. Of course, they're interested to asking their questions and they would like to know the answers of their uh, classmates. So, ask your learners to stand up and to move while the music plays. Choose the proper music just for your kids. They can not only move, but for example, dance, the kind of it. Uh, it is a mingling activity, yes? And the rules are, as soon as music stops, learners stop at the nearest partner, ask and answer their questions. When music starts playing, they move again and asking, um, talking to next partner. The activity can be organized in another way. Ask your learners to make two circles. When music plays, ask them to move when music stops, they should stop, turn to the partner from another circle and talk to them. And then the activity goes on. So, this activity is talk when the music stops. And activity number three, pizza slices of my life. On the slide, you see my example. 
Can you identify the activities from these pictures? So, bigger or smaller parts of pie chart depict the amount of time I spent for the aspects of my life. As far as you can see, a third, that is for work. A fourth, for family. Then goes my professional development, hobbies, nature, meditation. And yes, the smallest one is for coffee. It means whatever happens around, it doesn't matter how busy I am, I always find just several minutes for a cup of coffee, for chatting with my friends or just enjoying the silence. And that is pizza slices of my life. Think of pizza slices of your life. Are they the same, similar, or completely different from mine? Could you let me know about it? Pizza slices of your life. So what is the bigger part of your life? Write your answers in the chat. Similar work. Exactly. Yes. Family. Good. <laughs> Even the same. Mm hmm work. Yes, that is our teacher's life. Work and family. Actually, these are the leaders. Family, work, hobby and sleep. Oh, yes. Sorry, I forgot about sleep. Exactly. We should add to find at least some part of our time for, for sleep. Yes. And our kids. Yeah, and sport and travel. Good, thank you for your ideas. Absolutely. Garden, no, oh, what a brilliant idea. And that is maybe your, your time for meditation, I hope at least, that it is not another type of hard work. And dreams, oh, thank you for sharing this, really lovely. And pets, good. So, thank you for sharing your ideas. Also, a dog coffee. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, I have a question. Do you find these activities useful? Let me see it. On the dashboard of your screen, you can find an icon of a palm. It seems like you have it in orange or reddish color. Um, let's have a kind of a voting. If you like the activity number one, that is stop bursting, please click on this icon. So let's vote for the activity star bursting. Click on the palm. Uh-huh. Good. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, if uh, you find activity number two, talk when the music stops. Now click on your palms. We're talking about the activity, talk when the music stops.
Oh, good. Many thanks for your voting. Okay. Thank you. And now up the time to vote for the activity about pizza slices. Who likes this activity? Ooh, so many votes. Good. By the way, I've nearly forgotten to say that actually the activity pizza slices of my life, uh, you can adapt a bit. Uh, for example, at the beginning of September, you can offer your learners to draw pizza slices of their summer. Yes? Exactly. And then uh, to have this chart to talk about their summer. Or on Mondays, you can offer pizza slices of my weekend. And of course, depending on your learner's age, they can describe this pie chart using the proper words they know. For example, for kids is just to say big part yes, of the biggest slice. Uh, if your learners are a bit older, they can use a fourth, yes, a third, these fractions. So I think this activity is rather versatile. Oh, thank you very much. For your feedback, kids, I'm happy to know that the activities you find the activities rather appealing. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, so all of these activities are uh, on a, this presentation, and you can find it and upload this PDF file from this webinar, find the proper button, and after the session, just upload them for you, okay? To use it with your learners. Let's make most of this use. Good. And now let's turn to our question and answer time. During the session, you wrote some questions not those connected with the sound, yeah? But actually questions. Uh, let me a second or so, just to take one after another, and I'll answer them, as I promised before. Okay, good. So, the first question is, summer school, when, <laughs> thank you, and why you? Good question. Uh, when the information is on this slide, it is in July. We are talking about from the 6th to the 10th of July in Ushgarat. And in August, it is from the 8th to the 13th of August in Kamenets Podilski. Uh, in Kamenets Podilski, we will have one day off, that is for sightseeing. Actually, the topics and the lengths of the courses are the same, but in Ushgarat, the difference is in Ushgarat, it will be a five day summer school. In Kamenets Podilski, it will be a six day. Having a Sunday, just two go sightseeing to enjoy the time in this city. Okay? That is about the dates. And all the information, of course, you can find on our um, site, Training Linguist UA. And the second part of your question, so why you? Uh, exactly. There are several summer schools you can find in Ukraine. And as we monitor, we found out that actually the content of these summer schools are different. Um, as I said before, our summer school is based on the Cambridge English teaching framework. And that is our idea to test it. 
to see how it works, we included all five categories. And that is the opportunity for you actually to learn, to check your knowledge, to refresh them, and to unwind, frankly speaking. Because we think that summer is the best time to unwind. When else? When not in summer. And the location we chose because of their rather appealing for tourists. Agree here? Yes? Thank you very much. Good. Uh, the next question is, give more info about the course teaching young learners and teens. Okay, so that is the 24-hour course. It consists of 11 modules. You can take the whole course 24 hours or for your convenience, we split it up in three blocks. So up to you to choose how it is more convenient for you. You can take only one block or the whole course. Uh, this summer, we start with the level foundation. That is to refresh knowledge. We go back to the basic. Because uh, we know that sometimes we have some ideas, some insights about how to teach more sophisticated um, notions. But what we do really need to know for sure how to teach skills yes, or language system. It is really necessary because we are teachers of English and that is what is expected from us to help our learners to learn this English, to know and to use it. And that is why we start just from the basic level foundation. And connected to this question is another one. Who are your trainers? Thank you for the question. As I mentioned, uh, this course this summer starts in seven cities in Ukraine. And that is why it was just a long process of selecting trainers, because all of them have international certificates, not only uh, in knowledge of language, but also in methodology, as well as uh, some of them covered the course uh, for teacher training, to become teacher trainer. After that, we had a 12-hour session with them on the materials we created, because uh, we do Mm, promise you that it doesn't matter which city of Ukraine you are doing this course, the quality will be equal and excellent in any city. That is what I can guarantee you. Okay? Information about our trainers, their names, just their educational background, you can find on our site. Okay? So, uh, training, linguist, UA, and the page with trainers. Uh -huh. Thank you for this question. How to become your trainer? Is it possible? <laughs> Good question. Actually, everything is possible, yes, under the sun. Uh, I just said about the procedure, how we selected uh, our current trainers. First, if you want to work with us, please send us your CV and please contact us. Um, it would be good actually to persuade why exactly you think that you are the proper trainer and we are open actually because only seven cities. Now we have trainers. It's not the whole Ukraine. So feel free to contact us and we will talk and uh, I'll help you to become our trainer and then everything is possible. Good luck. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for the question about Clio. Absolutely, we do know that it is necessary uh, not only to teach this at school, but especially in colleges and universities. 
And yes, CLIL is one of the sessions in the course Teaching Adults. So this session is already included there. That is, as soon as we start off this course, uh, you will know about it and please feel free to register for the course. Mm -hmm. You have talked about test, uh, where we can learn about our level and tips to improve. Is it online? Where, where is it uh, in the, on the internet? Uh, absolutely. It is online. That is a tracker. Uh, so first, in this presentation, the link to this tracker is included. When you uh, download it, you can find it, follow the link, and you will have an opportunity to do this test. Um, actually, I don't like the idea test. Actually, it is self-diagnostic, okay? Because um, it is really useful first to identify in a safe um, surrounding environment, yeah, at home, to identify my gain and my gaps, yeah? And as soon as I uh, find out my gaps, that is for me a kind of direction where to move. What else I should learn uh, to say that, okay, I'm an expert in English. So, uh, on this presentation, you will find it. And at our summer schools, that is what we'll do on day one. We will give you an opportunity to do this uh, self-diagnostic um, evaluation and for you, to make your individual plan of development just on your own. Okay, thank you for the question. So, whether EMI course um, to have it on summer school? Uh, I have some doubt whether it is possible because as I said, a certificate in EMI, it is a 40-hour online course plus 24-hour uh, tutor-led. And our summer schools are 24-hour courses. You know, the idea is uh, in that course, uh, 40 hours online, that is about five hours online for each module. And it would be a good idea for you to do online part on your own. And yes, we uh, this summer in July, uh, we start this course EMI. Please look for this information and register for the course, because actually now we are in the process of having learners for this group. Yeah. So and this summer you will have an opportunity to do it. Thank you, Olena, for this question. Uh huh. Good. <laughs> Will you conduct autumn or winter schools? Thank you, Natalia, for this question. Um, let's do this way. The matter is training central in West um, set up only this year, 2019. We have lots of plans, lots of ideas. And you know, why not? Um, if you invite us to your city, I think it would be a good idea. Yeah. I say yes. We will organize summer school and winter school, uh, and especially we will see the result of our summer schools. We'll take into consideration the feedback our participants will give us, and I think we'll improve it and make it even better. Thank you again. What about summer school in Lviv? <laughs> um, again, another Natalia, thank you for the question. Uh, do you mean this summer or next summer? About this summer, actually, I have some doubts, but we can just put it in our to-do list for the next summer. Yep, yeah? will it be okay? Good. Mm -hmm. Mariana asks about the price. So all of the information about prices, durations, to some content ideas, 
All of this you can find on the site in the page of information about our courses. Actually, this part is Nashi uh, Kursi. Okay, so you will find all of this there. Uh, so the question from Elena will be something for teaching adults in future. Yes, we will start this course. Now, actually, we are completing um, just making the materials because mostly we take the materials from Cambridge University Press. But uh, what actually we are doing a kind of localization of the materials, OK, because we want to have these materials proper for our context. Uh, question, what about Dnipro? Thank you, Olga. Dnipro is OK. Um, do you mean whether we are going to start our course in Dnipro? Of course. Uh, now we are having actually some conversation with some trainers from Dnipro as soon as we complete the process uh, of um, just taking on the trainer. We will let you know, and of course, Dnipro is maybe number one just for us to, to start the course. We will, absolutely. What books will you recommend for the teacher's development? Uh, thank you, Natasha, for the question. Um, now, for me personally, yeah, good. And the books actually, which we used. Uh, for writing parts of uh, sessions for our courses. Uh, have a look at the books of Penny Err, Methodology. Um, I can't uh, just avoid mentioning Scott Thornbury and his books for teachers. Another one is, of course, Jim Scrivener, Teaching Learning. Uh, have a look at Jeremy Harmer. These are rather practical uh, pieces of advice. Actually, these books are collections of recommendations. What exactly to do? How to teach? And of course, the list is rather long. And um, no, the question just pushed me to the idea that maybe I'll share on our posts because uh, those who follow um, our company um just wrote to me that they are really grateful for our post with activities dictagloss is running dictations make sure now we are thinking about having this kind of posts about the books we recommend for teachers those who don't have opportunity to attend courses yeah uh, but just to have something in their hands and to study so thank you again for this question oh yes i'm showing about the time so all good things may come to an end. And now on today's webinar date as well. I hope uh, it was of some use for you. And now you know where to grow. I thank you for your active participation. And as a stirrup cup of our session is Mark Twain's words. Continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. So. Thank you again and have a fruitful summer. Bye-bye.